Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel Thakar Ki Patshala and today in this video I will talk about how to form Hurwitz determinant from the given equation. If this is your first video or in case you don't know, this is the second part of this video series Routh Hurwitz Stability Criterion. The first part is about introduction and history of this topic. If you have not watched that video, then make sure you check that out. Link can be somewhere over here. So let's begin the second part of this video series. That is how to form the determinant from the given equation. Today I will show you just one simple technique after which you will be able to solve almost any problem which is thrown to you. So forget all your distractions and focus here. I will explain theory along with the example to make sure you can get a better understanding of this topic. So first of all, to write the determinant, you will need a characteristic equation. It depends on the mood of examiner that either they can give you a direct characteristic equation or they can give you a transfer function. If they do so, then the denominator of the transfer function is our characteristic equation. The first step is that take characteristic equation is equal to 0. Here we are taking this example s cube plus 8s square plus 14s plus 24 which we will solve along with the explanation of theory. So take characteristic equation is equal to 0. Then the second step is to compare it with standard form of the characteristic equation. This is the standard form of the characteristic equation. Compare given equation with the standard and find out constants. Here a0, a1, a2 up to an are constants which are in multiplication with the different power of s. If we compare this equation with the standard form, then we will find a0 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to 8, a2 is equal to 14 and a3 is equal to 24. Once you have found out the constants, we can move forward to the third step which is to write this constant in the form of determinant. To write Hurwitz determinant, write all the odd coefficient which means a1, a3, a5 up to as many you have. If we look into our example, then we have a1 is equal to 8, a3 is equal to 24. We do not have a5, so we will take a5 is equal to 0. In order to write the next row of Hurwitz determinant, just take all the even quantities like a0, a2 up to as many you have. In our case, a0 is equal to 1, a2 is equal to 14. There is no a4. So we are taking a4 is equal to 0. Here is a notice whenever, whenever I talk about odd and even then I am talking about this a0 and a1 thing not the value which we have discovered. So please keep in mind this. Now to write third row for which determinant you have to do nothing just move the number of odd row to one place means write here 0 and then copy paste the first row just skip that last digit or here we will shift our first row to one place and write here 0. Yeah. That's it. Our determinant for this example is completed. If you have to write the fourth row, you have to shift the row of even number to one place. Here we have three columns. So we are limiting our this determinant to just three rows. So it can become three by three determinant. If you have more numbers, let's say if you want to write the fifth row, then move the digits of first row to two places. Once we have formulated the Hurwitz determinant, then our goal is to find out the solution, whether the system is stable or not. To determine that, we have to find d1, d2, d3, which are called as a subdeterminant. So how to find them? Let's check out. Value of d1 is nothing but the value of first digit of the first row, which is a1, which in case here is 8. So value of d1 is 8. Now d2. d2 is a 2 by 2 determinant made by n circled quantities, which are a1, a3 a0 and a2. This example d2 will be made up of 8, 24, 1 and 14. If you solve this then you will get the answer 88. d3 is formulated with the n circled quantities. Just expand previous determinant by one place. On both sides you will get a 3 by 3 determinant. For our example well the whole example is a 3 by 3 determinant. If we solve this then we will get value of 1212. Now this is our last step to find the system is stable or not. If we look at the calculated value of d1, d2 and d3 for this example, then all these values are positive. So system is stable. If we see in general, then if the values you are getting of subdeterminant are positive, then system will be stable. But if you are getting any one value or multiple value of subdeterminant negative, 
then the system is unstable. I hope you have got a good idea about how to formulate the determinant from the given equation and how to solve that to ultimately find out the stability of the system. So that's it for now. This was the second part of this video series. Next part is coming very soon. How to form Rao theory and how to solve that. Also, I will be posting some more videos of solved example by this method. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like it if you have liked. Comment down below if you have any suggestion or questions. Thank you.